welcome to Jolene Knits a Lot. My name is Jolene and this is a podcast about knitting uh, with the possibility of other crafts but today we're gonna stick to the knitting. Hi how are you? How are you doing? Are you um, getting a lot of crafting done in this sort of crazy um, unsettled time? I'm recording this podcast before the results of the US election are known and um, I think I, like a lot of people, are keeping my eye on the news, uh, wondering what's going to happen, um, waiting, watching, <laughs> crafting um, as a distraction. And so I just wanted to say that if you need an emotional support Canadian, um, I will be your emotional support Canadian. I'm going to tell you things like, take a deep breath, it's not over till it's over. Get some rest, look after yourself, drink some water, drink some tea, focus on your crafting, it's going to be okay. Now I totally understand if you choose to have a different emotional support Canadian. Um, Simu Limu Liu, Simu Liu photo um, has offered to be your emotional support Canadian. I wouldn't be offended if you chose him because um, he's a very funny actor. He's going to be the latest Marvel um, superhero in a movie coming out, I think, in the next year or two. He's on Kim's Convenience in Canada, and uh, that shows offers him the opportunity to take his shirt off a lot, and he has um, done some very important work there. So if you're looking for an emotional support Canadian, I am happy to do that for you, but if you choose him, I totally understand. Welcome to today's episode. Um, let's get into it. Uh, I hope you have some, um, maybe a nice beverage to keep you cozy, a cocktail or two, <laughs> um, maybe some knitting or some crochet or just something to sit back and relax with. I'm so glad you could join me today. I have a few things to talk about, but not a lot of um, progress, I guess. Um, I know last week I was talking about some socks that I was making and I've been talking a lot about trying to find the best top-down heel flapping gusset uh, heel for socks with striping patterns. Um, last time I think I talked about the German heel, which is quite a wide heel. It has a really nice sort of um, garter ridge along the side and it uses pearl decreases um, along the gusset. This time I chose to um, go back to my old standard, a slip stitch heel, um, which is pretty standard I think. Let me show you the socks that I'm talking about. So these socks were knit in the um, child colorway. I used Nomadic Yarns um, yarn in uh, just a plain sock base. I think it's 75% wool, 25% nylon. And uh, the color is based on the Child or Baby Yoda from the Mandalorian series, which, did you see the first episode? We'll talk about that later. Anyway, um, I think I was pretty successful in this endeavor to make a heel that didn't really interrupt the striping pattern. So if you can see here, the heel is right around here. So you can see those stripes are actually really quite even and I'm really quite happy with that. Um, what I ended up doing was knitting my heel on 60% of the stitches for the sock. So for this sock, uh, a 64 stitch sock, I used 38 stitches, which is about 60% of the stitches of the sock. Um, and I think that turned out really well. I used some uh, Knit Pick Stroll in a Jackrabbit Heather um, colorway for the cuffs, heels, and toes. And I think it, I was pretty successful in not interrupting that color uh, striping scheme, which is really what I was going for. Um, I have two socks, so a pair, which I'm quite delighted with, and I think I will be wearing them probably later as I watch episode two of the Mandalorian series, which came out last Friday. Uh, okay, so I watched it with my husband. I thought it was really good. I was really delighted that they took an opportunity to insert Tim Timothy Oliphant, who, okay, Timothy Oliphant as a um, like Western style town sheriff 
perfect. Perfect casting. Loved him in it. Uh, I feel like uh, the wardrobe or the armor he was wearing made him look extremely skinny. <laughs> but um, I thought he was great. I thought whoever did his hair and um, goatee, he was looking very good. Loved the gray. Thought he was a great character. Nice addition to the series and also uh, a nice twist at the end. So if you, like me, are looking forward to your weekly dose of The Mandalorian, um, I can't wait to see what happens this week. Child socks knit with nomadic fibers um, and a really cute uh, pair of socks. I'm quite delighted with. Um, moving on. What else have I been knitting on this week? So this is my only finished um, object this week, but I've been working on a couple things. I wanted to show you the progress I've made on my um, Love Note hack sweater. So this is the sweater that I'm, I think I sort of started talking to you about in my first episode where it was just the yarn and an idea. Um, last week I had cast it on and was, um, Sort of working on it but it was difficult to see and so this week I definitely have progress so let me just show you how it's looking now and talk a little bit about it so I think now it's a little bit easier to see that feather and fan stitch that I inserted instead of the um, classic love note lace um, and I thought maybe I'd talk a little bit about how I chose this lace pattern when I'm looking at swapping out um, one pattern for another in a pattern hack, ideally what you're looking for is something that has a similar stitch number uh, so that you can just um, swap one out for the other and it doesn't really interrupt anything. You don't have to do any fancy math. So in the Love Note sweater, the lace pattern is over 12 stitches and I want to say 20 rows for my size. Um, so when I went looking for an alternative lace pattern, I was looking for something that would be sort of a multiple of 12 or that would divide into the total number of body stitches evenly. Um, I settled on this um, sort of feather and fan pattern, which has 24 stitches and is a four um, row or round repeat. So for me, um, this slotted in really, really nicely. Um, I think the waves sort of are evenly distributed around the front and back of the body as well as the sleeves. Um, because it was a four round repeat, I could do it five times. Um, and I'm really, really happy with that. Now you can see that through the body, I, w I have been alternating skeins pretty religiously. There is some sort of flashing going on where you see um, sort of pools or flashes of, of similar colors. Um, on the sleeves, I chose to just knit them sort of around. Um, and you can see that the, the skein that I used for the sleeves is a bit lighter or has more lighter spots than the body one. I'm okay with that. I think that you have to be sort of okay with some variation if you're gonna be using a variegated yarn like this. and. Um, going into what I knew that I would have sort of some of that variation and uh, I'm just fine with that. So the other hack that I did for this sweater is um, I added some short rows at the back of the neck to raise the back collar a little bit um, so that it would sit higher than the front collar so sort of hard to see but here's where the front collar is sitting and here's the back collar. The way that this pattern is knit, you cast on the next stitches provisionally. So they are just sitting there waiting to be finished. Um, so I knit the body uh, down past the arms and then I went back and I, before I finished the sweater, um, I went back and I picked up those next stitches and I put them all back on an active um, on, on a needle and I worked um, three sets of short rows on each side. Those short rows were, um, I used a German short row technique, which I will link to in my show notes below. Um, and what I did was, 
when you're working short rows, you want to kind of come about, you want to work them over about two thirds of the sweater. So I calculated from my cast on number of stitches, how many total stitches was two thirds of, the, of that total. And then I worked half of them here, did a short row, worked back, did a short row here, and then I worked back this way, and I did another short row about eight stitches before I got to the first um, short row, or wrap and turn, or whatever um, short row technique you're using. Um, so I did that three times. I did one, two, and three. So once I've done that um, three rows on, or three short row wrap and turns on each side, um, for a total of six rows of height that I gained, then I just um, continued knitting in the round. So I went back and worked all of those wraps and turns or those short rows um, to close them up once around. And then I started um, back on the pattern. So I just, um, what I did was when I picked up the next stitches, I worked my short rows and then I went back to the pattern and proceeded as the pattern suggested. Um, and I think that'll be quite nice. I think it'll sit nice higher up in the back than in the front. Um, and the reason that I do that before I finish the body is that I like to know how much yarn I have uh, left to knit down the body. I, um, I understand that this is a cropped sweater and I'm not really, um, I don't, I, crop sweaters just aren't ones that I gravitate towards. So I want to make sure that this sweater will be um, a comfortable length for me. It'll probably be a little shorter than I normally knit my bodies. Often I knit the body of a sweater about 15 inches from the armpit down to the bottom of the sweater. That's a comfortable length for me. This one I think I'm going to try for about 13 maybe just to make it a little bit shorter. Um, we'll see. So that's how my love note hack is uh, coming along. I have put the, oh, the body stitches back on the needle and I'm working them in the round just until I get to the point where I'm ready to work the bottom ribbing. Um, as I said, the Love Note sweater is reasonably quick knit and I think uh, the reason for that is uh, very clear instructions. Again, it's a tin can knit pattern. They're excellent in their pattern writing and um, also you're knitting at a quite a big gauge. So this sweater I believe is knit to, I can check actually, I think the gauge that you knit to is 16 inches, six, sorry, 16 stitches for four inches. Let me just confirm that, yes. 16 stitches for four inches or four stitches to an inch. Um, so you just don't need as many stitches when you're knitting at that kind of a gauge. Uh, I'll let you know how it turns out. But that's where I'm at with my love note hack. Um, I have been working on the um, scarf knit along from Knit Collage. So I'd like to show you where I'm at with that. Um, this, <laughs> this pattern I keep in this rather large basket, um, partly because the balls are, when wound up, are quite sizable. Um, and the knit, I think, it's, itself will be quite sizable by the time I'm done. So let me show you my progress with this and then talk a little bit about it. So this, ooh, this scarf uh, is knitting up, I think, quite nicely. Again, the, the, you can see the yarns are quite thick and I'm using, again, my nunchuck needles, <laughs> my really, really wide needles. Um, and the yarns in this kit are really quite interesting. The main color yarn is uh, merino, twisted, with some um, silver and gold Stellina threads. Then each of the um, contrast colors are um, slightly different. So the first color I used, the first contrast color I used, this is blowing out sadly, um, is just a pink version of this background color, so that's really sweet. And then the second one is this, uh, this yarn. Um, it, and it's quite different. It's, uh, again, a wool. Let me see how it's described. It's called Gypsy Garden Yarn. And it's wool, but every once in a while, uh, twisted into the wool or wound into the wool are bits of fabric. Um, so actually, here's a bit of, of fabric, if you can see that. 
worked into the yarn. And then every once in a while will be these, um, like a flower. <laughs> if you can see that. In fact, I've got another one coming up. Just worked into the yarn. So as you're knitting, you get these little pops of fun things. Uh, the third yarn that I've just uh, added this week is actually not what you would, I think, consider a yarn normally. It's actually um, strips of fabric or ribbon uh, cut and tied into knots. It's called Wildflowers, this one. So that is my contrast uh, color number three. When I'm done with that one, I'm going to add this one. It is uh, called Castaway Yarn and it's Coconut Sparkle. Ooh. So it's a lovely creamy color. And then my last one is a yarn called Daisy Chain because it has these little daisies woven into it. So these are yarns I think I wouldn't necessarily grab from a yarn store because I think I'm kind of a traditional maybe kind of knitter. Um, but for this project, it's so much fun to be knitting along and just come across a really pretty flower or some fabric in the in the yarn. It's definitely a very textural project. The yarns themselves are very thick and thin and different. You can see here, this is the fabric yarn and how it creates a different sort of um, finished fabric. But I'm really enjoying this knit. And I think part of why I'm enjoying it is because I'm allowing myself time with it. Um, there's plenty of people who have been uh, working on this knit along that have already completed their projects. Um, this scarf in particular was one of the smaller projects, um, but there are people who've completed sweaters. I think there's some people who are like working on their second or third sweater in this knit along. Like people are really um, uh, working, like really working on these projects. I think partly because you get um, progress really quickly because you're working on a really fat yarn but also I think because of the joy of working with something different and the texture and the different sort of qualities to the yarn you're using. Uh, but part of why I chose to knit this um, project is because I wanted something um, where I could enjoy the process of knitting it. I wanted to take my time with it. I wanted to knit it only when I had was in the right sort of mind space to um, be quiet um, and just enjoy the process of knitting with these uh, yarns that aren't my sort of go-to or normal for me um, but just enjoy watching this come together uh, and be mindful of the process of the knitting of it so um, I've been taking my time with this uh, every few days I'll pick it up and I'll work um, sort of a section of the pattern so that I'm not uh, getting lost in the pattern, but also just enjoying the feel of these yarns as I work them, um, the surprises that come up when I'm uh, knitting away and a little uh, burst of fabric comes up that I wasn't expecting or how the yarns play together, um, the different thick and thicknesses of them. Uh, so this for me has been very much a process knit. Um, and I guess I kind of want to talk a little bit about that. Are you a process knitter? Do you enjoy the knitting? Is it the knitting that you're looking for? Or do you knit because you want the finished project? I think I sort of am a little bit of both. I think that I, I like the knitting. I like knitting. Um, and the knitting, the act of knitting, um, is very soothing to me. Uh, it is comforting. I enjoy the, I enjoy watching progress and I think that I like the feeling of accomplishment when I finish something. Um, but am I a, like do I want, am I knitting because I want the finished project or am I knitting because I enjoy the knitting? And I think for me it's a little bit of both, but I think because I spend time knitting in the car, when we're driving someplace or if I'm watching TV I'm usually knitting so it's not what I'm necessarily paying attention to or focused on and I think that 
that was what I sort of wanted for this particular project. I wanted to enjoy the knitting. And I think I'm doing that. Um, I mean, the, the knit along has only been going on for maybe two weeks. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not racing through this project and I don't have to. It's a beautiful scarf. It's really interesting yarn. And I'm just gonna take my time and enjoy the knit. And I'm looking forward to this little, this little flower getting knit in very soon. Um, yeah. Um, so this project for me has been very much about being mindful of knitting uh, and the joy that knitting gives me and enjoying the materials I'm using. But having said that, I did cast on this morning another pair of socks. Um, this pair of socks is destined, <laughs> again, uh, for the festive knit along hosted by Amy Florence of the Stranded Podcast. I have very, very little to show you because I only just started this morning. I'm knitting the evergreen socks. Um, I've knit these socks before and I think they're really, really cute. Um, they have a lovely sort of evergreen Christmas tree pattern in lace around the um, leg of the sock and then the rest of it is just plain old knitting. So there's a little bit of interest in the lace section and then there's a little bit of um, plain old knit away stocking stitch for the foot. Um, so I've, I have cast on and knit oh maybe three rows of ribbing. I um, think I am um, going to be knitting on these a while and enjoying this knit for a little while. The yarn I'm using is Yarn Ink. Yarn Ink is a dyer out of Calgary, Alberta, which is uh, about three hours south of where I live. Two and a half, depending on how fast you drive. This is called Vintage Christmas and I picked it up a few years ago. It's a really sort of vintagey, creamy gray color with pops of a deep, forest green and a bright Christmassy red. So while I think these are festive, um, they're, they don't scream Christmas and that's okay. Uh, I think that they're a sock that I would wear probably year round. Um, so I'm looking forward to knitting, having a little bit of interest in the lace section and also just um, the nice soothing sort of stocking stitch for the heel as they carry on. So that's just the very beginnings of a pattern, sorry, project, that is uh, waiting for me to really get cracking on them. And that's all that I have on the needles this week. Um, I do have some plans for future knitting. Um, maybe I'll just share those with you right now. Now, uh, David's tea delivery at my door just now. Uh, looking forward to that later. Um, so what am I uh, going to be casting on in the next little while? Well, as I mentioned, I've been watching The Mandalorian and then at the last uh, episode, somebody showed up uh, that was unexpected and exciting. So um, I was inspired <laughs> to go into my stash and uh, dig up this striping yarn from Mustache Fibers. This is the Boba Fett colorway. It's hard to tell when it's all wound up. But I'm looking forward to uh, knitting some Boba Fett socks for either my husband or my brother, my dad, my brother-in-law. Um, just some nice man's eye socks in the Boba Fett colorway uh, as I watch The Mandalorian from week to week and see what Boba Fett, assuming it's Boba Fett, gets up to. So that's going to be um, on my needles in the next little while, I think. So the next thing I'd like to cast on in the next little while is the Active Duty Cowl. This is a cowl by Maxim Sear. He is a very talented um, illustrator and also pattern designer out of Montreal, I believe. He and his partner are um, just amazing pattern designers and dyers, and they've come up with some really great uh, designs over the last few years. I am interested in um, knitting this cowl, which is sort of a camouflage type take on uh, knitting. I think it's gonna be really fun, but I also think that I have to be in a mind place where I'm ready to be reading a chart and paying attention to a chart. 
<clears throat> which is fine. I can totally do that. Um, I have these two yarns that I picked up at a local yarn shop, the Fiber Nook. These are West Yorkshire Spinners. And the yarn itself is Blue Faced, Blue Faced Luster DK. Uh, I really like Blue Faced Luster because I think it's got a nice sheen to it. It's a long staple wool. It's pretty soft. So I think it's very, it'll be very soft around the neck. And I guess the only decision I need to make is do, which color do I use for the background and which color do I use as the contrast. Um, I've been looking at some of the projects online and I do like the ones that have the lighter color as the background and then the darker one as contrast, but I guess I still haven't made up my mind. So I'm going to do some research. I'm going to look at some projects on Ravelry and uh, figure out how I want to do that. But I have two skeins of both colors and I'm looking forward to cracking on with that pattern. Um, every once in a while I get cravings to do things like color work or cables, and right now I'm very much in a sort of color worky sort of frame of mind. So I'm looking forward to casting this on in the next couple of weeks, and I'll let you know how that goes for me. Um, and that is all the planning I have sort of on my needles right now. Today I am wearing my throw over um, sweater. This is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. Um, very, very popular design. The pattern is written to be knitted in Aran Waite yarns, um, but I uh, opted to knit it in uh, sport weight. Uh, I've done this before. I think I talked a little bit about this when I knit my spark cardigan. Um, I knit that one in DK versus the worsted weight it was recommended. And this one, um, I used a sport. So the um, color work sections are knit in dyed in the wool in their, um, sorry, spin cycle in their dyed in the wool yarn, which is a sport weight yarn. I used three colors. The blue is called Saddest Place. This pinky color in the middle is called Mississippi Marsala. And the brown I used at the bottom is the saddest, no, that's not right. The yarn I used at the bottom, this brown, is called Shades of Earth. Um, as a background color, I uh, love a navy sweater. <laughs> I just love navy. I think it's a great um, sort of all around color, especially with jeans. Anyway, I used uh, Brooklyn Tweed Peary. This yarn is a sport weight and it's really really lovely with the um, spin cycle it is a sport, as I said a sport weight yarn I used the fleet color um, the two yarns really played nicely in the color work section um, I had no problems with the um, with the color work at all it was a delight to knit and I do have a little bit left of um, all three of these colors and so those have gone into a basket um, of leftover dyed in the wool odds and ends, which I have plans for in the future to make um, uh, a shawl. But when I am ready to cast that on, I will share that with you. So right now I've just been sharing this yarn or holding this yarn in a basket, um, fondling it from time to time and uh, planning. It's too precious a yarn to let anything go to waste. And so um, I have uh, little odds and ends of different from different projects that I've uh, made over the years of this dyed in the wool weight and so it's waiting patiently for me to have the time to cast on a new project with them. So this week my 12 year old daughter sent me a TikTok video link. It was a link to a video about uh, cranking a sock tube on a circular sock machine and I thought oh this is fun like I'm very interested in how circular sock machines work and I'm sort of toying with the idea of getting one uh, but she followed up the video link with uh, a very adamant this is cheating and so I said to her why what about this is cheating she's like that's not how you knit socks <laughs> well that's how some people knit socks and I think it's great to have uh, a faster way of creating socks but she's quite adamant that using a machine to knit socks would be cheating I sort of uh, admire her 
uh, strong opinions on this subject. Um, and maybe it just means that she appreciates the work that I've put into knitting some socks for her over the years. Um, I thought it was interesting that she had such a strong opinion on something that I'm sort of um, interested in. Uh, do you guys have circular sock machines? Do you like to use them to crank tubes? Or are you a purist and like to knit your socks by hand? Um, I don't, I've never really been in of the opinion that there's one right or wrong way to knit. Um, I think if you get a fabric that you like, then that you're doing it right. Um, I'm also sort of of the opinion that there's lots of ways to knit. Um, I like to use DPNs or double pointed needles when I knit my socks, but I know a lot of people who use nine inch circulars or maybe um, two circulars or um, magic loop. There's no wrong way to do it. Uh, you get a sock in the end either way, uh, but it's just what you're comfortable with and what you like to do. So um, I, uh, I think that uh, whether or not you're hand knitting your socks or using a circular sock machine, a sock is a sock, and there's nothing better than making your own socks. Um, this is definitely woolly sock or handmade sock season in my house. I know I've been washing a lot of handmade socks lately, uh, and I hope that you have the opportunity to, to enjoy some of your hand knits, uh, whether it's knitting by hand or by machine or with a circular sock machine, or maybe you're enjoying um, some knits that somebody has made for you. Uh, I know where I am right now, this is very much a woolen season, so I'm happy to be pulling out all of my hand knits um, to enjoy the coziness of this uh, season. Anyway, I think I've come to the end of my episode and I'm so glad that you could come and join me today. I hope that I have um, offered you a little bit of respite from the uncertainty of um, a sort of unstable political environment at this time. Again, I'm very happy to be your Emotional Support Canadian, but if you choose this guy, I wouldn't be offended. Um, thank you again for joining me. I hope in the next little while you find time to do something that you enjoy doing. I know that I plan on knitting a lot. Thank you.